Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Why don't we stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. It's good to be in the house of God. Everybody should be standing pretty close to somebody. Look at them and tell them that you're glad they're here in the house of God tonight.
running down your dusty road. But my Lord, who is faithful and is true, I said he's right here and he's come to carry you. Oh, that's my can make a way. Amen. Praise the Lord. So thankful that he can make a way when there seems to be no way. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. We're going to have a special service tonight. I'm sure you've already heard that. And I don't want to keep you here till 1030. So I'm not going to infringe on your time too long, but you can be seated if you'd like. I want to do something very simple here in our hearing tonight, and that's to read the Word of God. Anybody ever like to do that? Just going to read you some scripture. It's been on my mind all day long, and it kind of was a joke to myself. You ever joke to yourself? Well, I'll just read this tonight. It, it just wouldn't leave me and wouldn't leave me, so what we, What I thought I was going to preach tonight, I, was, I just put it off. I don't want to, again, I don't want to mess it up for you, make you tired and late for work tomorrow, give you an excuse anyway, right? Amen. One, one guy said, his boss told him that if he was going to be a minute late, it was as good as being an hour late. And so he said, well, that takes the pressure off of me. <laughs> so he said, my hour gives me time to stop and get a donut and a cup of coffee. So he said, if it's the same to you, I'll be there in an hour then. <laughs> I don't recommend that. But. And so I'm not going to make you do something like that and lose a job tomorrow, but I do want to talk to us because God can make a way. And if we, and I'm, I want to say this, if I can, I'm going to be, try to be delicate here, but the Gentile church, if we could understand what, what took place for God to make a way for us. Amen. I saw somebody make a comment the other day, a preacher nonetheless, that said it's not biblical to pray for Israel. Said, show me, show me book, chapter, and verse for it. So these people, they went out, you know, trying to. He said, that still doesn't give book, chapter, and verse for it. But I'm fixing to give you book, chapter, and verse for it. I don't have the, 
the gall or the what. I'm sure some of you could do it. I just thank God what it takes to get in there and wade into that junk. If you're going to ask a question like that, you probably know the answer. You're just trying to stir up strife, so I don't enter into that stuff. It's ridiculous. But in my heart, I've settled the question on my own. You know what I'm saying? In Romans 11 and verse 17, it says, And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, you see, some, some, let's see, some uh, plants, that's what I'm looking for, plants, if they're wild, they don't produce like they do if they're from good seed. And so we were that wild olive, amen? We weren't really productive, but we were grafted in, and we became part of the productive part of the root. And so... It says that we were made partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. So it's, we should be careful about how we make our boast. And the Israelites did the same thing. And if you look in, even, even when uh, Jesus talked to the woman at the well, she was, says, well, our fathers worship in the mountain yonder, and he, he said, if you knew who you were talking to, you know, that's where we get in trouble, where we start making our boast and where our worship is, our boast and, you know, how, who we are and what we are. We not, ought not to do that. Be very careful. I believe in this end time that the Lord's going to have a revival that's really going to flabbergast some, some dyed-in-the-wool, staunch, conservative, and all these other words you want to place on apostolic Pentecostal believers when they start seeing people that were wild olive that were that are going to be grafted in. Amen? And I'm thankful for that. And you better be thankful for that because if you're not, then you're boasting against the tree that bore you. Amen? There's another. There's a, quite a few more scriptures, but there's another scripture that, Christ, that closely correlates to that. You can't boast against the thing that brought you to where you're at. You can't do that. Thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. So you're making your boast and say, hey, they were broke off, so make room for me. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear, for if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. I love this scripture, and maybe several of you can tell us who said that for your Brother Henderson, almost every time he got in the pulpit, he talked about the goodness and the severity of God. I'm just about to cry right here listening to it. But On them which fail severity, but, but towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. See what I'm saying? You get your little self puffed up, you're going to get upset when he comes in at the last minute and grafts them back in. Well, that ain't fair. I've been working all day long, and he's going to get the same reward I'm going to get. Let's just accept the reward we got and be thankful and say, thank you, Jesus. I take it. I'm so thankful. <laughs> Amen? If we can keep the right attitude about it, we can keep the right heart about it, we're going to be part of that that stays grafted. But there are going to be those that I have a feeling that are going to be broken off because they're not going to accept those that are grafted in at the last minute. So we got to be careful. <clears throat> anyway. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? And there is a lot that's said in there, and I don't, I don't discourage you from going home and reading this tonight because there's a ton that's being said right there in that little bit. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness is part, in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, but they are blinded for now for our benefit. Somebody say, they're blind for my benefit. And thank God. Amen. 
And so we don't boast against them. We don't talk against them. We, we should pray for them. That's just the principle that's all through your Bible. The Bible says, let's to, and not just not that they despitefully use, but you pray for those that despitefully use you. you. We don't get arrogant because we've passed the bar. Amen? <clears throat> there shall come out, for as so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. They are enemies of the gospel. This is true. They are enemies of the gospel. But for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet now have obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Our job, our sole job, is to serve God so that he gets glory out of our life. It's not to make a boast of ourselves. It's not to make a show of ourselves. It's not to be made something. We're not, we're not, this wasn't done to us to make us special in the world, or, but it is set apart, amen? So we have to be careful in how we approach living for God, and we should always look back and see the pit from where we were taken from, the rock from which we were hewn, because if we're not careful, we'll forget. And if we forget, we'll think we stand on our own merit. And I just said this this past Sunday that we should take heed that if we think we stand because we better take heed because you're going to fall. So we should be very careful of that. So that's all I have tonight. I know that sounds very short and simple and sweet, but that is a boatload of information for you to take home and ponder this week. So when you think about the things that are going on across the pond, as they say, please remember that we share in this with them and they with us. That's another part of Scripture that's, that's brought out. We didn't get here by ourselves. Amen? And I'm going to tell you this. All of us in here are different in so many kind of ways, but we all share in this gospel together because of the goodness and the severity of God. Let's stand together, and we're going to pray, and I'm going to turn it over to Brother Daniel. Lord, we thank you for this time we've had together, your word. I pray that you'll help us to ponder it. pray that you'll help us to take it in, to digest it. Lord, God, I pray that it will take part in our being and help us, God, to consider where we have come from and the great and mighty acts that it took to get us here. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who's thankful for God's grace that we are able to obtain the salvation that we did not deserve? Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for the word tonight. Uh, I just want to say a thank you. Uh, tonight is our Pastor Appreciation Night and Pastoral Family. Uh, I just want to say thank you to our pastor and his family for the years of service that he has blessed this church with and for his, uh, his vision for this church and this community. Let's give him a hand clap of appreciation. I do thank him for his impact on my life personally and uh, his involvement in allowing God to, uh, to use me and to use me in this church and him trusting me uh, and growing me in, in ministry. And I do thank him for that. It is a, a great honor. Um, so tonight, we begin our festivities. I want to give a thank you real quick to Courtney and Ubi for their decorating skills and their uh, willingness to serve this church. And I want to thank them for decorating tonight's event. Um, so real quickly, before I pray for the food, I just want to ask that uh, before we all go through the line, that we allow the pastor and his family to go first, and then we allow the elders to go after that, and then everybody else. And if you have kids younger than 10, please bring them through with you, so that way you can monitor their uh, 
food plate consumption, not the consumption that they're going to eat, but what they put on their plate. Um, so if you could do that, that would be wonderful. So real quick, let's pray for the food and then we'll begin. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity, Lord, to come together in fellowship and to grow as a family and believers in Christ, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you'll anoint this time of fellowship and this food, Lord Jesus. I pray that it'll nourish our bodies and give us all a safe day and a safe week. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.